Hello everyone. Uh, this is Doctor Shi Jun Wang. Uh, it's been more than seven months since I last updated or uploaded a new video. Uh, I sincerely apologize. I, I know a lot of my subscribers and and listeners were uh, waiting uh, for me to uh, upload new episodes. Um, well, here I am. Um, many of you who knew me uh, or knew my channel uh, know that I've changed to a new uh, position at uh, Baylor University. Uh, and then we moved from Salt Lake City to Austin, uh, the whole family, last year. Um, and uh, well, this, of course, this was also to my surprise that uh, we all know Texas is huge as one of the biggest states uh, in the country. But then the a few major cities are quite close by, it's uh, within driving distance. Uh, for us to drive to uh, Houston takes about three hours and the same uh, to drive to Dallas. And as a new piano professor in town, uh, I was asked a lot to judge local competitions or to give talks and lectures. Uh, I guess most of the uh, obvious reason is that I'm a newbie, I, I don't have any local students yet. Uh, and it's the most fair thing to do. Uh, they, they want to hire somebody who doesn't you know, have any affiliation with, with other students. Um, so for, I think, uh, two months, every weekend, I was somewhere judging competitions or giving a talk. So that really messed up my uh, schedule in uploading because I usually do uh, uploading or, or record lessons uh, in the, uh, at the weekend. And, and after, after that, there was like the graduation season uh, and it was the finals and auditions. And then the uh, beginning of the summer, we moved to a new house. Uh, and also I was in Europe for 10 days doing a festival uh, where I taught and, and performed. So I really tried as hard as I can. It's always in my mind that I have to uh, upload a new video. Um, so here I am. Um, the last video I uploaded uh, before this big stop uh, was the uh, faculty recital I gave at Baylor. Uh, and the last video I, I performed was actually the uh, waltz, uh, Opus 18, the grand brilliant waltz in E flat major. Um, and today I'm going to talk about this one, uh, since a lot of people have asked me to give a tutorial on this. Um, before we start, um, I'd like to share something, like my personal, my uh, totally my own understanding of this piece. I think this is really a very good piece to prepare if any of you have uh, the ambition to ever perform the 24 uh, Chopin Preludes. Um, of course, we all know, you know, a couple of uh, preludes in that whole set is very, very difficult technically, but the most challenging part of performing that whole thing as a whole, you know, a lot of people do that as like the second half or even the first half of a recital program. Um, the, the challenge part is not only the technical part, but how can you change into different moves, different atmosphere, different feelings uh, within like a very short, like within half recital time, uh, you have to change 24 times. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, very often you have to change to a different mood every minute. And even for an experienced actor or actress, that is challenging. And I don't think they ever need to face that uh, in a movie, they have to change it 24 times. Um, but this piece, um, instead of the usual form for a waltz, which is, you know, there are two parts, right? A and B, and they're contrasting feelings, but then it's A and B back and forth. And this one has a lot of different moods. Um, so for me to play this is almost like it reminds me of playing the, the preludes. Um, less than a minute, you have to change to a totally different uh, feeling. So for people who wants to eventually play that set, this is really a, a, a entrance point where you can you know really benefit or, or practice this mood change. 
Um, and the other point I want to make before I start is that uh, this is a waltz, right? Waltz, usually dance music are uh, pretty well formed, um, but then don't be fooled by the title of the pieces. Um, Schubert had eight impromptus, and impromptus really it means something I just, you know, out of the blue, uh, over a whim I compose something, but it's not. Uh, it's all very well organized, uh, it's like a very, very classical form, usually four by four, or, or the, the phrasing is, is like metrical. Um, so this one too, uh, it's, a, it's a waltz, it's a dance, but then the, um, you know, even to compare this to some of the Mozart's phrasing, this is more traditional, yeah, because sometimes Mozart will, you know, kind of play with you, give you, once in a while throw you a, instead of an even number, uh, even major number uh, phrase, he will throw you an extra. But this one, it's almost like you can divide it by a ruler. It's four by four by four. So uh, even the very beginning, this kind of triumphant uh, trumpet playing. <laughs> And if we really look at a, a, a little bit of Shinkiri analysis, one. So it's a big scale going up using four measures, and then. So really, um, it's four measures going up, four measures going down. And then the beginning of this downward motion. It's piano. So I guess it's like more positive. And then back off. And then positive again. Yeah. So we, we can really conclude this is like four measures interlude and, and also a 16 measures. Yeah, four by four. And then this next part. It's leggero, yeah, very, very light. And I think this is quite lighthearted also. It, it's nothing heavy, it's not proud, it's not brilliant, but then it's, uh, it's quite happy and light, lighthearted. Um, and what's really interesting is that instead of four by four, the last two measures seem to be separated. So instead of one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So this last two measures that I played, Chopin put another separate piano marking, soft, and then you see if you see the slur, they're separated. So instead of it's so to me these separated two measures uh, really gives us a totally different uh, feeling. Um, it's almost like, you know, if you, you look at the shape of the melody or even the rhythm, rhythmic pattern of the melody, if we were to put lyrics or text into them, it should be the same word but repeated twice. And we all know if we want, if a, a professional actor wants to repeat something, he or she will not do it exactly the same way, right? The second phrase should be somewhat different. So here, if we apply that same uh, rhetoric approach to this, we should then play, yeah? We should be at least something uh, softer or, or, or louder. It doesn't matter what kind of change, but we have to change. So. That's the conclusion of that. Yeah, um, and the next part where we have new materials, we also change the key. Something so different. Um, first of all, 
um, from the very beginning, we always have this single melody. And here, however, it's doubled. Um, and we have double thirds. We also have double six. And you know, for people who have a tiny bit of a theory background, double six and double third basically are the same thing, right? If you go from C to E, it's third. But if you switch the order instead of C to E, it's E to C, it's double six. So they're basically flipped. So it's the same thing, same two notes. Um, and when that happens in music, when a, a composer wants to double a melody, it usually means it's warmer, more fervent. Um, and not only that, um, I, I have other evidence that I think uh, Chopin provides. Number one is that there are more chromatic passing tones or chromatic lower neighbors. So instead of like before, there's basically all diatonic. There's no non-chord tones, it's scale. But here, instead of... non-chord tones. So one is B natural to C, one is D natural to E flat, a chromatic lower neighbor and it's incomplete. But we feel the pain here. We feel the struggle. And here we feel the release of tension. Yeah. So I guess a tiny little bit of uh, uh, the harmonic treatment but then really makes this whole uh, passage uh, a totally different feeling. And also, Chopin didn't put forte instead metal forte, so it's not proud and brilliant, but then a, a little bit more lyrical. Um, towards the end of this, and of course this one is another 16 uh, major section, so 4 uh, times 4, um, but then towards the end, um, I can argue that Chopin really makes this almost as complicated as a, a fugue, right? Not fugue, but uh, as contrapunto. There, there are so many voices. voices we can show to our listeners um, and since this, re this this piece really repeats a lot and we have first ending second ending uh, and it's not a recommendation that we should take it we have to take them right so it's, it's not like it's the exposition part of a long sonata um, so when we take the second time when we take the second repeat we can show a different inner voice uh, we can even choose, right? In this case, we have two inner voice. One is... Or we can also show, instead of the alto, we can show the tenor. Yeah? So it's, it's always good to have options. Um, and the other thing I want to just make an, an argument is that um, a lot of people view these composers, the you know top-rated composers, as almost godlike figures. Uh, if they say metal forte and somebody played a tiny bit louder than the forte, you're breaking the law. Um, it's, to me, it's a little bit like a moral policeman uh, kind of treatment. Um, people change, um, and if Chopin, being as talented as he is, if he only has one feeling towards the piece, I, I really don't think that's the case. Um, when he was 20, he must felt something that is totally different when he turned to 30. Um, people change and, and people's feeling change. Um, and this is something between the Asian culture and, and the Western culture that I, I mean, since I spent 18 years in, in China, 18 years in the States. Uh, people in China, we were not really that easily affected by weather. 
uh, it doesn't matter if it's rainy or, or cloudy or, or sunnier, but when I move to the States, that weather really is a big factor of one's mood. Um, and being uh, stuck in Rochester, New York for three years, I really treasure every second I see the sun, right? Sometimes you do see the sun for over the entire winter. It can be as long as, you know, four or uh, five months without seeing the sun. So uh, what if when Chopin composed this, it was like a pretty sunny day or, or it's a cloudy day? I, I do not know. But then the weather changed. And, and one's feeling and, and uh, state of mind also change. So my point is, um, uh, it is perfectly okay, in my opinion, and I teach my students the same approach, uh, to feel different. And um, that's why we need to have different options. When we feel sad on that day, we can do this kind of treatment when we feel a little bit more positive, there are other means that we can use to, to show it in the music instead of just one kind of treatment. It must be painful for these genius composers to put markings on the page, knowing that this might very likely be the only possible way to play this piece. We will continue uh, in our episode, next episode, to finish this piece. Thank you for watching, and I am glad to be back. See you very soon.